Hey y'all! How you doing? <laughs> it is my lunch break here at work and what am I doing? I'm walking laps in the parking lot and that's my my jam. That's what I've been doing. So of course if there's anybody outside or looking at me through the windows they're probably going what in the hell is that crazy woman doing? They know I'm walking but here I am talking to so yeah let's just call me crazy. I've probably got something in my tea because I had soup, so, oh freaking well. <laughs> anyway, I hope everybody's having a good day and a good week and a good weekend and all that good stuff. Um, first of all, I do want to say thank you to everybody for all of your kind and supportive comments off of my um, spousal emotional uh, video. It's really, really sweet of y'all. I really appreciate it. Um, my husband and I did have a chance to talk and uh, he actually watched my video. I asked him to and uh, things are going really good now. Um, let's see. We just kind of, you know, talked about the whole, the whole thing. We're kind of having to learn about each other all over again because as some of y'all said, he's not seen me before. So, yeah, it's a new me physically, but inside it's still the old me. So, the two are kind of having to catch up with one another and get used to what a new normal is. So, he's having to get used to that. I'm having to get used to that. It's just a learning process all the way around. So, um we'd say growing pains but let's call it shrinking pains there we go shrinking pains that's what we're all going through and some people handle it great other people you might hit a speed bump and let's say i hit a speed bump but anyway the most important thing if you're in a relationship with somebody um is a talk keep the communications open don't just let it bottle up and fester and then you explode later on you need to talk and uh you know good bad or ugly um and give him or her a chance to talk as well because um this is new to them too and they've been used to you a certain way and now it's all changing and you know i know the doctors and support groups talk about this but really there is no amount of preparation that you can do to prepare for this it's not going to hit any two people the same way it's just that's not how it happens so just like these pre-op to post-op advice videos that are going around i think those are great um i'm not really doing one because no matter how much preparation i could have done nothing that i could have done would have prepared me for what post-op life was like uh you know my tastes changed we all talk about the tastes changing my energy level changed my attitude changed stuff that used to bother me pre-op i could care less about now but stuff that used to roll off my back as a pre-op now totally gets under my nerves as a post-op you know my patience level has done a complete 180 but that's all part of it anyway let's get to the exercise i'm out walking and uh you know that's what you do people say well gosh i don't have the time to exercise you got to make the time to exercise you know if you if you work a traditional job you got to have weird lunch time or break time or something so if it's break time walk a lap in the parking lot walk up and down a flight of steps uh there are so many videos free exercise videos on youtube that are even like sitting exercises i've downloaded a couple that are all about arms and what i do is like when i have a break in the morning i'll either close the door in my office and sit at my desk or hell i'll go out to the car and do a 10 minute arms workout 
it's nothing fancy, but you can do what you got to do. You know, 10 minutes is better than zero minutes. Get you some of those little hand weights from wherever. People talk about, oh, well, gosh, I can't afford to join a gym. Walking's free. Walking's free. Want you some exercise equipment? Go to yard sales. Go to Goodwill, you know. I'll tell you what, this spring, because, you know, Christmas time and New Year's, everybody gets all this health and fitness stuff. And then they never use it, or they'll use it once, and then they don't use it anymore. And then spring, summertime, they sell it. Hit you up some yard sales. Get you some hand weights. Get you, you know, a jump rope or whatever it takes. Go to the toy store and get you a jump rope. Uh, that's all it takes. Just, just get up and do it. Um, ask around, you know, if you, if you have friends or people in, that you work with in an office or at your church or something, just say, hey, anybody got any old fitness equipment they want to get rid of? I bet you, you will have people saying, come get it. Come, you can have it for free if you just get it out of my house. How many people do we know that have treadmills in their house that are nothing but clothes hangers? Oh, yeah. Do it. Just ask her. Put the word out there. Hey, just like, you know, when somebody's having a baby, you'll put the word out. Hey, if anybody's got any baby clothes they want to get rid of or baby stuff they want to get rid of, oh, people will come out of the woodworks. They'll say, yes, take this stuff and just get it out of my house. They do the same thing with fitness equipment. Just speak up. Put the word out that you have a want or a need, and it will come to you. So, saying, I can't afford a gym is not an excuse. Saying, I don't have time is not an excuse. If you have time to be watching these YouTube videos, you have time to exercise. Take your phone with you and watch YouTube videos while you walk. Like I said, download some of these free videos and do the workouts. You don't have to spend $200 on exercise DVDs. There's a shit ton of it on YouTube for free. Get it. There's some from the American Heart Association that I know of that are great. And they're just basically stepping in place, marching in place videos. And by the time you're done with the workout, you've walked three miles and you haven't even left your house. What do you think about that? It is possible, but if you want it, you have to make it happen. There's one of the things we used to have all these motivational sayings. When I was in boot camp in the Navy, one of them was, if it is to be, it is up to me. Corny, but it's true. We used to also say pain is temporary, but pride is forever, and that is absolutely true. One of the ones that my son has with his Marine Corps group is pain is just weakness leaving the body. Amen. Amen. Now, it's cold out here, and it's wet, and it's miserable. Would I rather be inside, sitting on my ass? Honestly, yeah. I'm not that crazy about being out here. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, that's really it. Um, don't forget guys, send me those questions. If you go to my, what do you want to ask Melanie video, a couple of videos back, post questions in the comments. You can email me at melaniesliceThinner at gmail.com. And you know, if you want to ask me what vitamins I'm taking, ask me where I buy my vitamins. Ask me what protein shakes I'm drinking now. Because you know what? Yeah, I'm almost 10 months post-op. But I'm still drinking shakes. Because I have to get in so much protein. It is virtually impossible for me to eat it all. Just because of the restriction that I have. I've tried. And I just can't do it yet. One day I'll get there. But I'm not there yet. So I'm still drinking shakes. About three a day plus protein in my coffee so yeah don't be shy uh, ask away 
Um, that's about it. I love you guys. I'm not wearing my crown today because I'm out here walking in public and you know, I may be prissy, but I'm not that prissy. <laughs> uh, that's about it. Love all y'all. See you soon. Bye.